Having a strong mind is really important for how well you do in life. It's like a secret power that helps you keep going even when things get tough. Mental strength is what helps you tackle problems, stick to your goals, and face challenges with determination, especially when your talents and skills alone aren't enough. This video is all about the key ideas in Buddhism and how they relate to 10 habits that can make your mind weaker. If we learn and use these teachings, we can start a journey to make our minds stronger and more able to bounce back from tough times. We'll start by looking at 10 habits that can make our minds weaker. These habits are things we do every day without even thinking about them, but they can really hold us back if we're not careful. By understanding these habits better, we can start to make positive changes in our lives. We'll also explore how the teachings of Buddhism can help us overcome these habits and build mental resilience. Buddhism has lots of wise ideas about how to live a happy and fulfilling life, and we can use these ideas to improve our own mental strength. So let's dive into this journey together. By learning from Buddhism and understanding our habits better, we can unlock the potential to lead happier, more resilient lives. Habit number one, not expressing yourself. Not expressing yourself means keeping your thoughts, feelings and opinions bottled up inside instead of sharing them with others. It's like having a treasure trove of ideas and emotions locked away, hidden from the world. When you don't express yourself, you might feel a sense of suffocation, as if you're wearing a mask that conceals your true self. This habit can manifest in various ways, such as avoiding difficult conversations, staying silent when you disagree, or suppressing your emotions to avoid confrontation. It's a pattern of behavior that inhibits authentic communication and prevents you from fully engaging with the world around you. The consequences of not expressing yourself can be profound, gradually eroding your mental strength over time. When you withhold your thoughts and feelings, you deny yourself the opportunity for self-expression and connection with others. This can lead to feelings of isolation, loneliness and frustration as you struggle to articulate your innermost thoughts and emotions. Understanding karma involves recognizing that every action, whether positive or negative, carries consequences. And holding on to resentment only perpetuates negative karma. By forgiving others, individuals can break the cycle of negative karma. Forgiveness in Buddhism isn't always easy, especially in cases of deep betrayal or trauma. It's a process that needs patience, compassion and self-reflection. Sometimes, forgiveness may not happen all at once, but unfolds gradually over time, as individuals cultivate greater understanding and compassion for themselves and others. Ultimately, practicing forgiveness in Buddhism is a profound act of self-liberation. By letting go of resentment and embracing forgiveness, individuals free themselves from the shackles of the past and open their hearts to greater love, compassion and joy. As the Buddha said, hatred does not cease by hatred, but only by love. Through the practice of forgiveness, individuals can break free from the cycle of suffering and cultivate a life filled with peace and harmony. Number two, live with intention. In Buddhism, living with intention means consciously directing our thoughts, words and actions towards what truly matters to us. Guided by our values and aspirations, it's about aligning our daily choices with our deeper purpose and vision for our lives, rather than drifting aimlessly or being solely driven by external circumstances. At the heart of living with intention is the recognition of impermanence and the preciousness of life. Buddhists believe that life is fleeting and uncertain, so it's essential to make the most of each moment by living with purpose and mindfulness. One key aspect of living with intention is clarifying our values and priorities. This involves reflecting on what truly matters to us, what brings us fulfillment and meaning, and what we aspire to achieve in our lives. By gaining clarity about our values, 
we can make decisions that are in alignment with our deepest desires. This may involve setting specific, measurable goals in various areas of our lives, such as career, relationships, health and personal development. Another essential aspect of living with intention is practicing mindfulness in our daily activities. Mindfulness involves being fully present in the moment, aware of our thoughts, feelings and actions without judgment. By cultivating mindfulness, we can become more attuned to our intentions and make conscious choices that are in alignment with our values and aspirations. Living with intention also requires taking responsibility for our choices and actions instead of blaming external circumstances or others for our circumstances. We take ownership of our lives and empower ourselves to create positive change. This involves cultivating a mindset of accountability and resilience, recognizing that we have the power to shape our destinies through our intentions and actions. Moreover, living with intention involves cultivating gratitude and appreciation for the present moment. Instead of constantly striving for future goals or dwelling on past regrets, we learn to fully embrace and savor the richness of each moment, recognizing the beauty and blessings that surround us. Living with intention in Buddhism is about living consciously, purposefully and authentically. It's about aligning our thoughts, words and actions with our deepest values and aspirations and embracing each moment with mindfulness and gratitude. By living with intention, we can create a life that is meaningful, fulfilling and in harmony with our true selves. Number three, cultivate generosity. Generosity is a fundamental virtue in Buddhism rooted in the principle of compassion and interconnectedness. It is the practice of giving freely and selflessly without expecting anything in return and it is considered a powerful means of cultivating positive qualities such as kindness, compassion and joy. Generosity in Buddhism is not limited to material giving but encompasses all forms of giving including giving of one's time, attention, skills and even forgiveness and understanding. It is a way of opening the heart and connecting with others on a deep level, transcending the boundaries of self and other. One of the central teachings of Buddhism is the importance of overcoming selfishness and cultivating emotional intelligence. The solution to letting your emotions rule lies in cultivating emotional intelligence, mindfulness and compassion. Emotional intelligence involves recognizing, understanding and managing your emotions effectively. It means developing the ability to pause and reflect before reacting, allowing space for thoughtful consideration and conscious choice. By cultivating emotional intelligence, you can gain greater insight into your own emotional landscape and develop strategies for regulating your emotions in healthy and constructive ways. Mindfulness is another powerful tool for overcoming the habit of letting emotions rule. Mindfulness involves being present and attentive in the moment, observing your thoughts and feelings without judgment or attachment. It allows you to step back from your emotions and gain perspective rather than becoming swept away by them. Through mindfulness practices such as meditation and deep breathing, you can learn to cultivate inner calm and resilience even in the face of strong emotions. Compassion towards yourself and others is essential for breaking free from the grip of reactive emotions. Compassion involves extending kindness and understanding towards yourself and others, recognizing that we are all imperfect beings doing the best we can. By cultivating compassion, you can cultivate a sense of empathy and connection, fostering deeper relationships and greater emotional resilience. Habit number three, negative mindset. A negative mindset is like viewing the world through a dark lens where every situation is tinged with pessimism and despair. It's a habitual pattern of thinking that fixates on the flaws, 
failures and shortcomings in life while overlooking the beauty, opportunities and successes that abound. Those with a negative mindset tend to focus on what's wrong rather than what's right, magnifying obstacles and setbacks while minimizing achievements and blessings. They may engage in self-criticism, rumination and catastrophic thinking, dwelling on past mistakes and anticipating future failures. Overall, a negative mindset fosters a pervasive sense of hopelessness and helplessness, casting a shadow over one's outlook on life. The impact of a negative mindset on mental strength can be profound and far-reaching. When you constantly dwell on negativity, you undermine your resilience and ability to cope with life's challenges. It involves looking inward with honesty and mindfulness, examining our thoughts, emotions and actions with the aim of gaining deeper understanding and wisdom. At the heart of self-reflection in Buddhism is the recognition of the impermanent and interconnected nature of reality. By turning our attention inward and observing the ever-changing nature of our thoughts through regular meditation practice, we can develop the skills of mindfulness and self-awareness, deepening our understanding of ourselves and the nature of reality. Self-reflection in Buddhism is a transformative practice that leads to greater self-awareness, wisdom and liberation from suffering. By turning our attention inward with mindfulness and insight, we can cultivate a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us, leading to greater peace, clarity and freedom. Number 5. Foster Equanimity Equanimity is a profound concept in Buddhism, referring to a state of inner balance, calmness and non-reactivity in the face of life's ups and downs. It is the ability to remain steady and undisturbed by external circumstances, whether pleasant or unpleasant, and is considered a key factor in achieving true happiness and liberation from suffering. At its core, equanimity in Buddhism is rooted in the understanding of impermanence and the ever-changing nature of reality. By recognizing that all phenomena are transient and subject to change, we come to understand that clinging to pleasant experiences or resisting unpleasant ones only leads to suffering. Equanimity involves accepting the flow of life with an open and balanced heart, without being swept away by the fluctuations of pleasure and pain. One of the key benefits of fostering equanimity in Buddhism is the cultivation of inner peace and stability. By developing equanimity, we can remain grounded and centered amidst the turbulence of life, maintaining a sense of calm and clarity even in the midst of challenging situations. This inner peace allows us to respond to life's difficulties with wisdom and compassion rather than reacting impulsively out of fear or aversion. Fostering equanimity in Buddhism involves cultivating mindfulness, the practice of being fully present and aware of our thoughts, feelings and bodily sensations without judgment, through mindfulness. We can observe the arising and passing away of thoughts and emotions with clarity and objectivity without becoming entangled in them. This mindful awareness helps to create space between stimulus and response, allowing us to respond to life's challenges with greater wisdom and skillfulness. Another important aspect of fostering equanimity in Buddhism is the cultivation of acceptance and non-attachment. By letting go of attachment to outcomes and preferences, we can free ourselves from the tyranny of desire and aversion and find peace in the midst of life's uncertainties. Moreover, fostering equanimity in Buddhism involves cultivating a sense of interconnectedness and compassion for all beings. By recognizing the common humanity that unites us all, we can develop a deep sense of empathy and compassion for others, regardless of their circumstances. This sense of interconnectedness helps to dissolve the barriers of self and other, leading to greater harmony and unity in the world. One powerful practice for fostering equanimity in Buddhism is meditation. 
Meditation provides a space for quiet contemplation and inner reflection, allowing us to cultivate a sense of calm and equanimity in the midst of life's challenges. Through regular meditation practice, we can train the mind to remain steady and balanced even in the face of adversity. Fostering equanimity in Buddhism is a transformative practice that leads to greater peace, clarity and freedom. By cultivating mindfulness, acceptance and compassion, we can develop a deep sense of inner balance and stability, allowing us to navigate life's ups and downs with grace and wisdom. Number 6. Cultivate Patience Patience is a virtue highly esteemed in Buddhism, seen as an essential quality on the path to enlightenment and liberation from suffering. It is the ability to remain calm, composed and tolerant in the face of difficulties, delays or provocation without becoming agitated or reactive. At its core, cultivating patience in Buddhism is rooted in the understanding of impermanence and the law of karma. Buddhists believe that all things are transient and subject to change and that every action has consequences. By recognizing the impermanent nature of reality and the interplay of causes and conditions, we can cultivate patience as we navigate life's inevitable challenges and setbacks. One of the key benefits of cultivating patience in Buddhism is the cultivation of inner peace and resilience. Patience allows us to remain steady and composed amidst life's ups and downs, maintaining a sense of calm and equanimity even in the face of adversity. This inner peace provides a solid foundation for responding to difficulties with wisdom and compassion rather than reacting impulsively. Cultivating patience in Buddhism involves cultivating mindfulness. The practice of being fully present and aware of our thoughts, feelings and bodily sensations without judgment through mindfulness allows us to observe the arising and passing away of impatience and frustration with clarity and objectivity without becoming swept away by them. This mindful awareness helps to create space between stimulus and response, allowing us to respond to life's challenges with greater wisdom and skillfulness. Another important aspect of cultivating patience in Buddhism is the cultivation of acceptance and non-attachment. Patience involves accepting things as they are without clinging to desires or expectations for how things should be. By letting go of attachment to outcomes and preferences, we can free ourselves from the suffering caused by craving and aversion and find peace in the midst of life's uncertainties. Moreover, Cultivating patience in Buddhism involves recognizing the interconnectedness of all beings and cultivating compassion for others. By recognizing that everyone is on their own journey, facing their own challenges and struggles, we can develop empathy and understanding for others, even when they may test our patience. This sense of interconnectedness helps to dissolve the barriers of self and other, leading to greater harmony and compassion in our relationships. One powerful practice for cultivating patience in Buddhism is meditation. Meditation provides a space for quiet contemplation and inner reflection, allowing us to cultivate a sense of calm and patience in the midst of life's challenges. Through regular meditation practice, we can train the mind to remain steady and patient even in the face of adversity. Cultivating patience in Buddhism is a transformative practice that leads to greater peace, clarity and freedom. By cultivating mindfulness, acceptance and compassion, we can develop a deep sense of inner peace and resilience, allowing us to navigate life's ups and downs with grace and wisdom. Number 7. Letting go of ego. Letting go of ego is a central teaching in Buddhism, emphasizing the importance of transcending the illusion of a fixed and separate self. In Buddhism, ego is viewed as the root cause of suffering as it leads to attachment, aversion, and a distorted view of reality. The Buddha taught that the self is not a fixed and permanent entity, 
but rather a construct of the mind, devoid of inherent existence. By letting go of attachment to the self, we can free ourselves from the cycle of craving and aversion and experience true freedom and liberation. One of the key benefits of letting go of ego in Buddhism is the cultivation of humility and openness. Ego often leads to a sense of pride, arrogance and self-importance which creates barriers to genuine connection and understanding with others. By letting go of ego, we can cultivate a sense of humility and openness, allowing us to connect more deeply with others and to see beyond the limitations of our own perspective. Letting go of ego in Buddhism also involves cultivating self-awareness and introspection by examining our thoughts, feelings and actions with mindfulness and honesty. We can become aware of the ways in which ego manifests in our lives. This self-awareness allows us to recognize the ego's influence and to let go of its grip, leading to greater clarity and insight. Moreover, letting go of ego in Buddhism involves cultivating compassion and empathy for others. By recognizing the interconnectedness of all beings and the shared experience of suffering, we can develop empathy and understanding for others, even those who may challenge or threaten our sense of self. This sense of interconnectedness helps to dissolve the barriers of ego and foster greater harmony and compassion in our relationships. One powerful practice for letting go of ego in Buddhism is meditation. Meditation provides a space for quiet contemplation and inner reflection, allowing us to observe the movements of the mind with clarity and objectivity. Through meditation, we can cultivate a sense of detachment from the ego's influence, allowing us to experience a deeper sense of peace and liberation. Letting go of ego in Buddhism is a transformative practice that leads to greater freedom, compassion and insight. By recognizing the impermanent and interconnected nature of all phenomena, we can let go of attachment to the self and experience true liberation from suffering. Habit number six, fantasizing instead of visualizing. Fantasizing is the act of indulging in elaborate daydreams or unrealistic scenarios, often fueled by desires, fears or insecurities. It involves creating vivid mental images of idealized outcomes or situations without regard for their feasibility or practicality. Fantasizing can take many forms, from imagining perfect romantic relationships or extravagant lifestyles to entertaining grandiose visions of success and achievement. While fantasizing may provide temporary escapism or pleasure, it ultimately serves as a distraction from reality, preventing you from taking meaningful action towards your goals or addressing underlying issues in your life. The negative impact of fantasizing instead of visualizing on mental strength can be significant and far-reaching. When you indulge in fantasies, you create unrealistic expectations and ideals that are often impossible to achieve in reality. This can lead to feelings of disappointment, frustration and disillusionment when your fantasies fail to materialize, undermining your confidence and self-esteem. Fantasizing can also foster a sense of complacency and passivity as you become content to dwell in the realm of imagination rather than taking concrete steps towards actualizing your dreams. Moreover, fantasizing can distort your perception of reality, leading to feelings of dissatisfaction and inadequacy with your current circumstances. By comparing your real life to the Ed Fantasias, you've constructed, you may feel a sense of discontentment or longing for something more. Even if your life is objectively fulfilling and meaningful, this constant pursuit of unattainable ideals can breed a sense of restlessness and dissatisfaction, preventing you from fully appreciating the blessings and opportunities that exist in the present moment. Furthermore, fantasizing can hinder your ability to cultivate resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity. When you're preoccupied with unrealistic fantasies, 
you may struggle to cope with setbacks or disappointments as you're unprepared to confront the challenges of reality. This can lead to feelings of helplessness and defeatism as you become resigned to the belief that your dreams are out of reach. The solution to fantasizing instead of visualizing lies in cultivating visualization and embracing impermanence. Visualization involves creating mental images of achievable goals and desired outcomes grounded in reality and informed by practical considerations. Unlike fantasies which are detached from reality, visualizations are rooted in a clear understanding of your strengths, resources and limitations, allowing you to develop actionable strategies for realizing your dreams. By practicing visualization, you can harness the power of your imagination to envision realistic pathways to success and fulfillment. Visualization involves not only visualizing the desired outcome, but also mentally rehearsing the steps necessary to achieve it. This can help you clarify your goals, boost your motivation, and build confidence in your ability to overcome obstacles and challenges along the way. In addition to visualization, embracing impermanence is essential for breaking free from the grip of fantasizing. Impermanence teaches us that everything in life is constantly changing and evolving, and that our circumstances and desires are inherently transient. By embracing impermanence, you can learn to let go of attachment to idealized outcomes and accept the fluidity of life with grace and equanimity. This can free you from the trap of unrealistic fantasies and empower you to engage with the present moment with greater clarity, purpose and resilience. Habit number seven, trying to control everything. Trying to control everything involves a relentless pursuit of power, certainty and predictability in every aspect of life. It's like trying to grasp onto water, futile and exhausting. Those who attempt to control everything often believe that by micromanaging every detail and outcome, they can ward off uncertainty, failure and discomfort. This habit manifests in behaviors such as excessive planning, perfectionism, micromanagement, and an unwillingness to delegate or relinquish control to others. It stems from a deep-seated fear of chaos and loss of control, driving individuals to exert their will over external circumstances and other people. The impact of trying to control everything on mental strength can be profound and debilitating. Constantly striving for control can lead to heightened stress, anxiety, and burnout as individuals expend enormous amounts of energy attempting to manipulate outcomes beyond their control. This results in a sense of overwhelm and helplessness as individuals struggle to manage the ever-increasing demands of their rigid expectations. Moreover, the relentless pursuit of control can erode trust in oneself and others as individuals become increasingly focused on preventing perceived threats and ensuring desired outcomes. This can strain relationships, both personal and professional, as others may perceive controlling behavior as intrusive, overbearing, or manipulative. Furthermore, trying to control everything can hinder personal growth and resilience as individuals become resistant to change and unable to adapt to unexpected challenges or setbacks. By fixating on a narrow vision of how things should be, individuals may miss out on valuable opportunities for growth, innovation and learning. This can lead to feelings of stagnation and frustration as individuals struggle to reconcile their expectations with the realities of life's uncertainties. The solution to trying to control everything lies in surrendering control cultivating mindfulness, and embracing impermanence. Surrendering control does not mean relinquishing responsibility or agency, but rather letting go of the illusion of control over external circumstances and outcomes. It involves accepting that some things are beyond our control and learning to trust in the natural flow of life. 
Mindfulness is another essential tool for overcoming the habit of trying to control everything. Mindfulness involves being present and attentive in the moment without judgment or attachment. By practicing mindfulness, individuals can cultivate greater awareness of their thoughts, feelings and impulses, allowing them to respond to challenges with clarity, compassion and flexibility rather than reactively trying to control or manipulate outcomes. Embracing impermanence is also crucial for breaking free from the grip of trying to control everything. Impermanence teaches us that change is inevitable and that nothing lasts forever. By embracing impermanence, individuals can learn to let go of attachment to specific outcomes or expectations and find peace in the inherent uncertainty of life. This can foster greater resilience, adaptability and acceptance of life's ups and downs. Habit number eight. Complaining about things outside your control. Complaining about things outside your control involves expressing dissatisfaction, frustration or criticism towards circumstances, events or people over which you have no influence or authority. It's like shouting into the wind, expecting it to change direction. This habit often arises from a sense of powerlessness or frustration with perceived injustices or hardships in life. Complaining may take various forms, such as venting to others, ruminating on negative aspects of a situation, or blaming external factors for personal dissatisfaction. The negative effects of complaining about things outside your control on mental strength can be significant and pervasive. Constantly focusing on what's wrong or lacking in your life can lead to a distorted perception of reality where negativity overshadows positivity and potential solutions are overlooked. This can fuel a cycle of pessimism and resignation where individuals feel increasingly disempowered and resigned to their circumstances. Moreover, habitual complaining can sour relationships and alienate others as constant negativity can be draining and off-putting to those around you. People may become reluctant to engage with individuals who habitually complain leading to feelings of isolation and loneliness. Furthermore, complaining about things outside your control can perpetuate a victim mentality where individuals perceive themselves as powerless, victims of circumstance rather than active agents in their own lives. This can erode self-confidence and undermine the belief in one's ability to effect positive change, leading to passivity and resignation. The solution to complaining about things outside your control lies in acceptance, focusing on controllables, and letting go. Acceptance involves acknowledging and coming to terms with the reality of a situation, even if it's not what you would prefer. It means recognizing that some things are beyond your control and choosing to focus your energy on what you can control rather than dwelling on what you can't. Focusing on controllables is another key aspect of overcoming the habit of complaining. Instead of fixating on external factors or circumstances, shift your focus to the aspects of a situation that you do have control over. This may include your thoughts, attitudes and actions. By focusing on controllables, you can empower yourself to take proactive steps towards positive change and growth rather than feeling helpless in the face of adversity. Letting go is also essential for breaking free from the grip of complaining about things outside your control. Letting go involves releasing attachment to specific outcomes or expectations and surrendering to the flow of life. It means accepting that some things are beyond your ability to change and choosing to move forward with grace and resilience. By letting go of the need to control every aspect of your life, you can cultivate a greater sense of inner peace and freedom. Habit number nine, blaming others for your problems. Blaming others for your problems involves attributing responsibility for your difficulties, setbacks, or failures to external factors or individuals, rather than taking ownership of your own actions or choices. 
It's like pointing fingers instead of looking in the mirror. This habit often arises from a reluctance to acknowledge personal shortcomings or mistakes and a desire to avoid feelings of guilt, shame or accountability. Blaming others may take various forms, such as shifting responsibility onto co-workers, family members or authority figures, or scapegoating certain groups or individuals for larger societal issues. While blaming others may provide temporary relief or justification, it ultimately perpetuates a cycle of victimhood and disempowerment. The effects of blaming others for your problems on mental strength can be detrimental and far-reaching. By externalizing responsibility for your difficulties, you relinquish agency and control over your own life. Fostering a sense of powerlessness and resignation, blaming others for your problems can lead to feelings of helplessness and despair as you perceive yourself as at the mercy of external forces rather than an active participant in shaping your own destiny. Moreover, habitual blaming can strain relationships and erode trust, as others may perceive you as unwilling to take responsibility for your actions or contribute to finding solutions to shared challenges. This can lead to feelings of resentment, animosity and alienation, further exacerbating feelings of isolation and loneliness. Furthermore, blaming others for your problems can undermine self-esteem and self-confidence as you come to perceive yourself as inherently flawed or inadequate. By avoiding accountability for your actions, you deny yourself the opportunity for growth and self-improvement, perpetuating a cycle of stagnation and self-sabotage. The solution to blaming others for your problems lies in cultivating personal responsibility, forgiveness and mindfulness. Personal responsibility involves acknowledging your role in creating or contributing to your difficulties and taking proactive steps to address them. It means recognizing that while external factors may influence your circumstances, ultimately you have the power to choose how you respond to them. Forgiveness is another essential aspect of overcoming the habit of blaming others. Forgiveness involves letting go of resentment, anger, and bitterness towards those you perceive as responsible for your problems and releasing yourself from the burden of carrying grudges. By practicing forgiveness, you can free yourself from the cycle of victimhood and reclaim control over your own emotional well-being. Mindfulness in response is also crucial for breaking free from the grip of blaming others for your problems. Mindfulness involves being present and attentive in the moment, observing your thoughts and feelings without judgment or attachment. By practicing mindfulness, you can become aware of the impulse to blame others and choose to respond with compassion, understanding and personal accountability instead. Habit number 10. Not making time for personal relationships. Neglecting personal relationships involves failing to prioritize or invest time and effort into nurturing and maintaining connections with family, friends or loved ones. It's like letting the weeds grow in your garden while neglecting to tend to the flowers. This habit often arises from a combination of busyness, distractions and misplaced priorities, leading individuals to prioritize work, hobbies or personal pursuits over spending quality time with the people who matter most in their lives. Neglecting personal relationships may manifest in various ways, such as consistently cancelling plans with loved ones, failing to return phone calls or messages, or withdrawing from social activities. Neglecting personal relationships may provide temporary relief or distraction, but it ultimately leads to feelings of loneliness, isolation and disconnection. The effects of neglecting personal relationships on mental strength can be profound and far-reaching. Human beings are social creatures by nature, wired for connection and belonging. When personal relationships are neglected, individuals may experience a sense of loneliness, emptiness or isolation, leading to feelings of depression, anxiety or low self-worth. 
This can erode mental strength and resilience, making it difficult to cope with stress, adversity, or life's challenges. Moreover, neglecting personal relationships can strain existing bonds and erode trust as loved ones may feel hurt, neglected, or undervalued when their needs for connection and intimacy are consistently ignored or dismissed. This can lead to feelings of resentment, animosity, or distance in relationships, further exacerbating feelings of loneliness and isolation. Furthermore, neglecting personal relationships can impact overall well-being and quality of life, as research consistently shows that strong social connections are associated with better physical and mental health outcomes. When personal relationships are neglected, individuals may miss out on the emotional support, validation and companionship that come from meaningful connections with others, leading to feelings of disconnection, alienation or existential despair. The solution to neglecting personal relationships lies in cultivating presence, communication and prioritizing relationships. Presence involves being fully engaged and attentive in the moment, giving your undivided attention to the people you're with and valuing quality time spent together. By practicing presence, you can deepen your connections with loved ones, strengthen bonds of trust and intimacy, and create cherished memories that sustain you through life's ups and downs. Communication is another essential aspect of overcoming the habit of neglecting personal relationships. Communication involves expressing your thoughts, feelings, and needs openly and honestly with loved ones and actively listening to their perspectives and experiences in return. By fostering open and authentic communication, you can build deeper understanding, empathy and connection with others, resolving conflicts and nurturing healthy, fulfilling relationships. Prioritizing relationships is also crucial for breaking free from the grip of neglecting personal relationships. It involves making a conscious effort to carve out time and space in your life for meaningful connections with family, friends or loved ones and honoring commitments to spend quality time together. By prioritizing relationships, you can cultivate a strong support network, foster a sense of belonging and community and experience greater happiness, fulfillment and well-being. In conclusion, our journey through the 10 habits that weaken the mind has shed light on the importance of mental strength and its relationship to Buddhist teachings, from negative mindsets to blaming others. Each habit reflects a pattern of thinking and behavior that can diminish our resilience and hinder our ability to navigate life's challenges with grace and fortitude. But with awareness and intention, we can transform these habits into opportunities for growth and empowerment. By embracing mindfulness, acceptance and personal responsibility, we can cultivate greater mental strength and resilience and lead more fulfilling and meaningful lives. I invite you to join me on this transformative journey by subscribing to Wisdom of Buddha, where we explore the intersection of ancient wisdom and modern life and discover practical tools for living with intention, wisdom, and compassion. Together, let's embark on a path of self-discovery and personal growth and cultivate the strength and resilience to face whatever life may bring.